Okay, so I have my file. I changed it into CMYK mode, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, black. Now, above layers, there is another option for viewing your, your image, and it's called channels. Channels in photography, for digital photography, is usually in RGB mode, and it shows you what the red lights are doing, what the green lights are doing, what the blue lights are doing. Channels in CMYK is like ink. And so it will be one, two, three, four, five channels. But really the top one, the fifth, is just all of them layered together. So it's called CMYK. So if I turn that off, and I turn off the individual channels, you'll notice that for black ink, this background actually has content. It's very, very slight because we haven't turned it into ink yet. This is still the computer. It's showing me how the computer is seeing this image. And so it can turn on black at any opacity or any uh, intensity from 0% to 100%, right? So we have pretty low intense intensity black. But if we add yellow to that, we're gonna see the yellow lights or the yellow ink rather with the black ink. And so that's what just so, uh, yellow and black would look like printing this background. And then if we add magenta, we're going to get these variations, right? And then if we add cyan, we get the full thing. Now, what I like to play with in channels is what if it's just yellow and magenta, no black, right? What if it's just cyan and yellow? So these, these are limited color options. And maybe I want to do half tones with just that, right? So there's no reason you have to do all four colors. But if you want full spectrum, it's best to do C, M, Y, K. Okay, now I have to turn these into dots. So the way you do that is you have to isolate a layer. So cyan seems like a really important one. So I'm going to isolate the cyan channel. And when I isolate it, even though that's the cyan one, it's controlling all the the blues, this is showing me its value range, the dark blues, the light blues. And it's showing me it as a grayscale because computers are binary. They see it, the lights either turned on or off. This is showing me how much they're turned on and how much they're turned off. And that's a problem for inks because these are not ink wash printers, these are just ink printers. They print solid dots about 70% opacity. So what I need to do now is go up to image, and I need to change the mode from CMYK color to grayscale. When I change it to grayscale, it's going to take out all the color information. And it's going to give me this. But I want to be careful and make sure that that looks like just this channel. And it does. And if I'm unsure, I can even delete the other channels, like drag them to the trash until I only have cyan left. And when there's only cyan left, it's going to be have no color. So then I convert it image mode to grayscale. And now all it's capable of is different values of gray, no color at all. Then I now I need to go to image mode and bitmap. So bitmap which is an old name for, for raster files, but bitmap means that there's only black and white. So from a distance, it looks the same, but here, only black and white. And then that is your ink work for the cyan layer. But you have options when you do that. So I'm going to go back in my history, where I'm going to just isolate the channel. Just have only cyan on. And then I'm going to say image mode, change it from CMYK to grayscale. And then I'm going to say image mode from grayscale to bitmap. 
So there are options here. And this is where you need to know the halftone dots and the angles and all of that. The first thing is what resolution do you want? It doesn't make sense to do this at 350 pixels per inch because printers can't print that fine at, with the halftone screen. So instead, just to make this really visible so you see it, I'm going to do something like 45, something less than 100. And then the method. So the method we saw before, because I just zoomed through it, is kind of that random diffuse pattern. It looks like risograph. I'm going to use the halftone screen that we were talking about. Then I say, okay, so it's going to be a 45 halftone screen, which means it's going to put 45 dots per inch. Then I have to say what the angle is. And this is cyan, so I don't want to use 45 degrees because I might layer it with another black one, with a magenta one. So cyan, I'm going to do 15 degrees because cyan is 15 or 75. And then the shape, the dots can be different shapes. I'm going to use the typical round to show you. But you can do this with any kind of shape. So now this is what it looks like. That's not what it looks like. That gave me, did I not pick dots? <laughs> Let's see. Just didn't look right to me. So I'm going to go back to grayscale, turn it to bitmap, 45 using a halftone screen. It was a halftone screen, it was just the wrong shape. 15 degrees, frequency, we'll just do this 45 as well. That's how many lines of type there are. And then round. I don't know why they're not round. Very odd. But this would work. Then I give this to the printer as the cyan ink. And everything that's black here gets changed to cyan. So I'm going to show you a different way, which will do it all automatically, because I, I built this into what's called a, um, an action. So let's see. I flatten the image. Here. OK, so I'm going to take this image. It's flattened. You see it in layers. It's RGB still. But I'm going to go to my actions. And you can find this under our Dropbox. You can download these actions. They're Carl's actions. There's a folder that you can load into your computer. And I have a color separation file, Carl's color separation. I'm going to do the CMYK full run, and I'm just going to hit play. It needs to be the only file open in Photoshop, and it needs to be flattened. And if you want to play with this, I can help you make sure you load it on your computer. Now, I created these actions. I have the rights to them. You can use them. And you can even see how they're made with this drop down. Oh, I know why. It's because this file is just so big. So let me make it a little bit smaller. And then you'll see those big dots. But here we go. Okay, so when I've run that action is what it outputs is as layers the different channels. So let's look at the cyan, which I, in the action, have replaced with a blue ink. So there you see the dots. Right? And they're at that 15 degree angle. And then if we layer it with the magenta, you can see how they make kind of roses together. And then if I layer in with the yellow, that fills in even more. And then with the black, which is very subtle in this image, there we go with CMYK color separation. Now, if I take all of those, those four layers, and I move them onto my original, I can use it like a digital effect.
And then I also have individual layers or files that my action creates for each ink for the half screen. So I'm going to show you that now that we know how that works and how you go through it. It helps if it's at lower resolutions so that you get kind of cleaner dots. This was on kind of a complicated gradation. So now I can take those. And the way I build it is that you have to hand register them like a silk screen so that you can get some interesting offsets. And so you see they're at a lower resolution than my original file. And I'm just going to scale them all up. Sometimes I put them in a group. And then I can play with arranging them in different ways. And I can play with different opacities. So let me make a white background. And you can do this with any RGB file once you understand how this action works. And you can see how it would be printed. So you see how they offset. So I can take magenta. And I can line it up just like you would for silkscreen prints. I can take yellow and line it up. And then it looks like black is already aligned. And there's my image with only the dots in those four inks. So I love that. I like that even more than risograph, but it's more complicated to do. And then I can put my actual image behind it, but then it just becomes really too much ink. Right? But you can play with blending modes and all kinds of things. Let's try it with something else. Let's try it with a project we've done before, because with the action, it can go really fast. So let's take, let's see. Take my exercise two emoji. I have it as a PNG here. I'll open it with Photoshop. And then I'm going to go to my actions, my CNYK full run. I'm going to make sure that it's the only file open, that it's flattened. And then I'm going to play it like an old VHS tape. And now the computer is running through all the things I programmed into it to separate it out into its dots. And now I have each of the, the layers. It looks like cyan is misregistered, which is kind of fun. But I can use my arrow keys. I can line it up, or I can leave some intentional offsets there. Often I'll do kind of 3D things where I move the magenta off to one side and the cyan off to the other. And then you put on 3D glasses. And it will give you kind of a, an effect of it floating. Right? Like you're seeing one, one side from one eye and one from the other. And you can try with limited color. So what would this look like with just blue and black? What would it look like with just magenta and black? Just yellow and black? Just yellow and cyan? All right, so those are real printing effects. <laughs> and the way they get delivered to the printer is actually as solid black dots. You know, they have to be labeled. So this is magenta, this is cyan, this is yellow. Sometimes the dots are big, sometimes they're small, sometimes they're close together. Depends on how much of ink you need of that color. All right, that's everything for CMYK color separation. And it can be a handy technique. It's also a great way to take something that's low resolution and be able to make it high resolution because the computer is making your dots. It's high resolution, but degraded into this printing method. Because you can output these dots at any size you want. But I like to make them visible. Otherwise, as you saw when I tried to do it, they just turn into little individual pixels on their own.